Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning in, and welcome to the Masterclass series. My name is Akilia Walp Adumbo, and I serve as a Technical Services Manager for the Americas region here at Oxford Nanopore Technologies. Today, I have the pleasure of kicking off this Masterclass series. Throughout the series, my colleagues will take you through all aspects of our platform, best practices for running an experiment from sample to answer. Our teams have curated specific topics within the Masterclass series that will guide you through our streamlined workflow that is comprised of four steps, preparation, the sample and library, sequencing and analysis. First, preparation. The lessons include this Masterclass, guidance on how to extract high quality DNA and RNA and selecting the right library prep workflow for your experiment. Second, sequencing. That masterclass lesson provides a step-by-step -step guide to loading a permethrin flow cell that will highlight transferable best practices to keep in mind for loading any of our flow cells. Third, the analysis lessons discuss getting started with data analysis and taking your analysis further. As a bonus, we have an additional masterclass that ties together in a worked example performing tumor normal nanopore sequencing. Let's get started with planning your experiment. Here are a few key learning objectives covered in this masterclass. We will begin with an introduction to how nanopore sequencing works, followed by the benefits of the technology and the wide range of applications. We'll go through how to plan your experiment, some key considerations, next revisiting the nanopore sequencing workflow, then how to really get up and get started. Lastly, I'll share some online resources to provide some additional support. Let's begin with how nanopore sequencing works. As you might already know, at the heart of our technology lies the nanopore. A nanopore is essentially a very small hole that functions as a gateway between two systems, facilitating the transport of molecules from one side of the membrane to the other. In our system, we use protein nanopores. Nanopores inherently have different shapes and properties, which can be enhanced through clever mutagenesis. We have selected the pores with the best features for sequencing on our platform. So let's dive into the details. Here in blue, you can see a nanopore embedded in a supporting membrane. When an electrical potential is applied to the system, ions can flow through the nanopore. The current produced by this ion flow can then be measured. In purple, you can see the motor enzyme, which is bound to a DNA molecule. The motor enzyme is added during the library preparation phase, and it unzips the double-stranded molecule and also controls the movement of one strand as it passes through the nanopore. As the analyte DNA or RNA passes through the nanopore, it causes a distinct disruption in the flow of ions that is measured on our devices and captured as an electrical signal. Our base calling software then interprets this signal and determines the sequence of the DNA or RNA strand. As soon as a strand has passed through a nanopore, that nanopore becomes free to start sequencing another strand. Among the growing benefits pertaining to Oxford nanopore sequencing, here let's consider two examples. First, our platform is not bound by PCR, hence there are no downstream deconvolution and interrogation of datasets in this regard. Plus, you can access unrestricted fragment lengths. The platform allows us to sequence DNA and RNA directly without the need for PCR amplification. This means it's also possible to directly detect base modifications which are maintained in the data. The platform is read length agnostic. It can generate reads of any length spanning five orders of magnitude from short, about 20 base pairs, to ultra long using our ultra long sequencing kit, which was instrumental for the telomere to telomere de novo assembly project. Since we have since we use native reads in sequencing, methylated bases are also captured in the signal, resulting in a robust analysis profile for all your projects. Second, 
With nanopore sequencing, you can access comprehensive genomic insight versus a restricted view as with other sequence by synthesis platforms. As we are not a sequence by synthesis platform, access to longer unbiased information rich reads like SNPs, indels, methylation calls, structural variants, copy number variation, etc., enables inquiry into a broader range of questions and more importantly, unlocking previously elusive answers and solutions. Putting it all together, Oxford Nanopore sequencing provides many benefits and great versatility, no matter your application, all without additional upstream modifications or processing or additional preparations. Our simple workflow coupled with long nanopore sequencing reads provides you with unrivaled high quality data and access to genic regions that are inaccessible to other traditional sequencing technologies. Now let's switch gears and talk about how to plan your nanopore sequencing experiment. At Oxford Nanopore, our sequencing workflow can be broken down into four consistent steps, and we have support and flexible options for each. We start with extracted DNA or RNA, and you'll find lots of guidance on how to extract high quality nucleic acids in the second masterclass of this series section. These samples are then prepared for sequencing using a nanopore sequencing kit during the library preparation stage. Next, real-time sequencing, and last, data analysis. When planning any experiment, we often start with our sample and how it should be extracted. Then we envision a stepwise path where the extracted DNA is turned into a sequencing library during the library preparation phase. This is then sequenced, the data is analyzed, and the scientific question is answered. In reality, things are a bit more complex. Let's say it's like a two-way conversation, and we recommend starting from the end point and working your way back. In most instances, the bioinformatics requirement of the experiment will dictate the data that are required, which in turn dictates the way in which you prepare the library. The requirements of the library prep could then dictate the type of extraction that you do. With that in mind, let's take a look at some additional considerations. First of all, what are the experimental aims? This could be, for example, simply identifying a microorganism, assembling a whole genome, or characterizing variants. Maybe you wish to phase your data too. Next, what are the sequences of interest in your sample? Is this a single genome or is this a metagenomic sample? or a specific region of interest, which might then benefit from a targeted approach. The size of the targets or genome is also an important consideration. Depending on the amount of data you need, you might then wish to sequence a single sample or many in a multiplex fashion. So what does the sample look like? We have solutions for DNA, native RNA, cDNA, as well as for those samples with different inputs and fragment lengths. But what other practical considerations could there be? Do I need a rapid turnaround time? Will the sequencing take place in a lab or perhaps in the field? Now that we have all those thoughts swirling around in our minds, let's look at the options we have for each step of the workflow so that you can choose what best suits your experimental goals. Preparation. Preparing the input and next the library. Step one, preparing the input. This involves taking a close look at your expected input and making a decision on whether the sample is good enough or could stand from a different extraction approach. For this, we have a growing repository of validated protocols to provide some benchmarking and to set some expectations for later steps of your experimental workflow. It is essential to properly qualify and quantify your starting input. Step two, preparing the library. Here's a quick look at our family of sequencing kits. As you can see, there's something for everyone. 
We recommend refining the library kit options based on a few parameters, a few shown here on the left, to guide you in making the best choice. There are kits for targeted sequencing, for barcoding, for multiplex fashion approach, those that require PCR-free options, enabling the preservation of epigenetic modifications, and then we have PCR available options if you have low inputs. Real-time nanopore sequencing also enables adaptive sampling, which is a unique feature to nanopore. This enables enriching or depleting regions of interest during the sequencing itself. So at the sequencing level, without any specific or special library preparation modifications or steps. Let's take a closer look now at how you should navigate the DNA branch of library preparation kits. The same thinking applies for the RNA branch of kits. Let's begin with defining the project. Are we looking at a whole genome sequencing project or a targeted project? Next, Refine these parameters in alignment with your projects. Example, input amounts, faster prep time, etc. And then, if required, further customize and optimize based on the number of samples for the project, thinking therefore if you're running single or multiplex. Our recommendation, if you have sample available, would always be to prepare a new library something nature and the biology of many inputs might not be in agreement with. We have recently released a specific protocol for our DNA libraries with this in mind, as an alternative to constantly making a new library, especially when samples are scarce and you need just a little bit more of data to make a conclusive decision. Essentially, you're able to reuse the prepared library from a previous run load that onto a new flow cell, and max out the data from that single library preparation. Step three, sequencing. We have a robust fleet of sequencing devices that cater to the scale and scope of your sequencing projects. The device you choose depends on the data yield your experiment requires and the number of runs you need to perform. The minion and gridion device run flongal and minion type flow cells whereas the promethine devices run the higher yielding promethine flow cells. The minion devices can perform a single sequencing run at a time, whereas with the gridion, you have the option of up to five sequencing reactions at any one time. The promethine family has options with two, 24, and 48 individually addressable or simultaneously running positions. At Oxford Nanopore, our goal is to enable the analysis of anything, by anyone, anywhere. Not only are our devices scalable, but we have also demonstrated their portability across exotic and extreme locations worldwide. Here you can see our minion device being used everywhere, from deep oceans to rainforests and even space. Researchers are using Oxford Nanopore sequencing to sequence in low resource settings with limited access to lab equipment, as our devices can be set up quickly, whenever and wherever they're needed. This has been critical in outbreak surveillance where our devices have been used in real world responses to outbreaks of Ebola, Zika, most recently COVID, and thus enabling public health organizations to continuously surveil other viruses in efforts to launch more expedient solutions. And finally, step four, data analysis. Similar to the other options or the, the other steps in our streamlined workflow, we provide a range of data analysis solutions. Finding the right option is easy. To begin, choose the type of platform you prefer using, point and click, versus command line. If a point and click option is chosen, you now have a choice of using Minnow or our epitome solutions. Whereas if a command line interface is chosen, that leads you to a different set of solutions. Our data analysis solutions have been created with all users in mind, no matter the level of bioinformatic expertise. 
These options can be categorized into three levels. Level one, Minnow and the Epitome Suite provides point and click analysis, local or in the cloud respectively, with no command line experience necessary. Level two, for the more routine or automated types of projects, we offer a different range of Epitome solutions, which can be run on your local computer or preferred server. And level three, for those with command line expertise, we have a range of research tools for the experienced bioinformatician, allowing them the freedom and flexibility to create custom approaches for their specific needs. Now that we have all of the pieces of the puzzle together, let's look at a worked example. Finding disease-associated variants using high-throughput whole genome sequencing. Because we're looking at methylation, we need to sequence native DNA. We'll also need to extract and preserve long fragments to best capture any larger structural variants. For extraction, if starting from blood samples, the Chiagen Pure Gene Kit provides a good balance of output and long fragments. Now, to ensure that we do our due diligence so as not to miss any variants of potential clinical significance, a whole genome approach is more suitable versus a PCR-based panel. For library prep, the ligation kit is the perfect solution. It's a PCR-free option and produces high yields of long reads in sequencing. Next, as coverage, high coverage is needed, sequencing on a promethine device will get us into the right ballpark for the depth of coverage we need for this specific project. For data analysis, the human variation workflow available within Epitome allows an all-in-one platform for calling SNPs, SVs, structural variants, copy number variants, short tandem repeats, and even methylation. So it is ideal for this comprehensive project. And there you have it, an end-to-end -end workflow. Getting set up for sequencing is simple. Within each of our protocols, we provide you with an experiment checklist to be sure you have everything in place before you start. Once this has been done, you can start with the hardware check, move along to the flow cell check, before getting into the fun of preparing and sequencing your own libraries. If you are new or returning to Nanopore sequencing, it is highly recommended that you complete a control run. This will establish a baseline of performance within your hands solidify key nanopore sequencing steps, and will give you the opportunity to get familiar with our protocols and analysis options. To get a better understanding of your existing computational infrastructure and to ensure best success in your actual sequencing runs. Before we finish this session, let's look at some online resources. First up, the Nanopore learning section of the community and the extraction protocols. Together, these will shape and refine the preparation phase of our workflow. Next up, our protocol library provides you the steps necessary for preparing your sequencing libraries and moving on to the sequencing phase. And next, our data analysis section rounds out the final step of our workflow, where you can find solutions based on your bioinformatic infrastructure and expertise. And with that, we've come to the end of this masterclass lesson. To summarize, today we have learned what to consider before starting your experiment and how best to prepare your samples, taking care to customize and or optimize along the way. We next looked at how to begin the process of refining the choice of library prep kits, finding the most ideal device for a lab versus an in-field approach, analysis considerations, then putting it all together and reviewing one of our worked end-to-end -end workflows. And finally, where to find additional online resources should in case you need it. I hope that you found these topics discussed beneficial. As you continue on your Nanopore journey from sample to answer, be sure to view the additional masterclasses within this series for further guidance, pointers, and best practices. Until next time, 
Thanks for tuning in.